You now know how to find the interest when the amount of time you've borrowed is only one year. But what happens if it's many years? So for one year, you know that the interest, the interest is going to be equal to the rate divided by hundred. That's going to give you the amount you you should pay for a principal of one rupee, multiplied by the principal, so that you can find out how much you have to give for the principal amount of rupees. Now this you already know. So let's say that you borrowed five hundred from somebody, and you borrowed it at a rate of interest of ten percent. Now I want you to take a couple of moments and calculate what the interest will be. The principal is five hundred. The rate is ten. So five hundred into ten by hundred, or five hundred by ten, which is going to be fifty. So right now you've just borrowed it now. So zero years have passed from you borrowing that money, and as we go this way, more and more years are going to pass. So one year has passed, and you know what to do for that. You just calculated that the answer over there is going to be fifty rupees. Is going to be the interest, fifty rupees. So how much is the total amount you must pay after one year? You must pay the five hundred, and on top of that you must pay the fifty. Interest, ten percent on five hundred. Now, what about one more year after that? How much? How much should you pay? If you have not paid them anything, you are still waiting with that money. Then, how much should you pay? So, two years have passed. This does not look like two. Two years have passed. Now, you must pay the five hundred anyway. That's your principal. You have to always pay this money. On top of that, you had some interest that you had to pay from last year. And now again, this year for five hundred, you have to pay another ten percent. So ten percent of five hundred, another fifty. What about next year? So you go to three years, and I think you can see what's going to happen. You're going to have a five hundred, which is the original principal, the two fifty rupees that you had to pay from last year, a fifty and another fifty, and for this year, because three years have passed, you've held on to the money of the five hundred for one more year, so you have to pay another fifty. So this is how it keeps increasing. So you have to pay more and more money as you hold this five hundred rupees that you borrowed, the principal that you borrowed. Now one of the questions you might have is why exactly is this called simple interest? It, it may not seem too simple. The reason it's called that is that each year you pay interest of only fifty rupees, which is ten percent of five hundred. So you borrow five hundred every year. You pay interest on that five hundred, the one that you started with. Now, what is the other way in which we could do it? The person who gave you the money can say, "Hey, first year you owed me five hundred. You paid fifty for that. No problem. But now you have not given me anything, which means this year you owe me five hundred and fifty rupees. So I must calculate my interest, not assuming you owe me five hundred, but you owe me five fifty. And how much will that be? So you have to pay me fifty five rupees instead of just fifty rupees. And then, uh, if you are wondering how I calculated this, I just did five hundred and fifty as a total amount. So ten percent of fifty five. Ten percent of ten percent of five hundred and fifty. I'm sorry, and that's going to be divided by ten fifty five. That's really not the point here. The point is to notice that the amount can keep increasing, and when you do that, when you keep changing the principal, that's called compound interest. And when you don't do that every year, when you calculate for the same original principal, then it's called simple interest. And we're only going to care about simple interest right now. Now, if you want to know how to calculate the interest for many years. When you know how to calculate for one year, the answer is very simple. Calculate for one year and then multiply by how many other years you have. That's it. This this entire video is over. But if you want to look at an example to see how this works, let's do that. Let's say that you borrowed six thousand twenty-five rupees. That's an extremely specific amount of money to borrow. So you borrowed six thousand twenty-five rupees and you borrowed it at a rate of ten percent per annum. And you must calculate the rate of interest. Or the the interest you will pay. This is of course the rate of interest. The interest that you will pay after not one year but three years. Three years. So the interest after three years. Now I'm just going to go up here and make you notice something. So you notice that the interest I paid in the first let let's change this back to simple interest. Yeah, it's fifty here, two fifties here, three fifties here, and notice the pattern. In the first year you will pay fifty. Second year you'll pay twice that amount. Third year you'll pay thrice that amount. So with this pattern in mind, all you have to do is come back here and say, "Oh, you want the interest after three years? I don't care. I'm just going to calculate the interest after one year and multiply it by three." So I'm going to forget that this three-year question exists and just look at this. And I know how to do this. I borrowed a sum of six thousand twenty-five, which is my principal, 
P R I N C I P A L, and I bought it at this rate. And now all I have to calculate is my interest for one year, and this I know how to do. So let me do that. I'll just unpack this in my head. I'll say, okay, for hundred rupees, if I had, for every hundred rupees I borrow, I must pay ten rupees as my interest. So for six thousand twenty-five rupees that I borrowed. How much should I pay as my interest per year? So interest, and now I know that I can just uh, use the ratio, the fact that these two ratios will be equal, and I know what I will get. My interest will be equal to if I multiply both sides by ten, then I will get six thousand twenty-five divided by ten, or six hundred and two point five rupees. Then the exact number here doesn't really matter. So I know this is how much interest I will pay for one year, and that's important to notice here. That's not the question. The question is for three years. So I'm going to write interest for one year. Now all I have to do to calculate my interest for three years, the interest for three years is to multiply this by three. So you can you can just do that if you want to. Six two six hundred and two point five into three. I'm just going to leave it like this. It's thousand. Eight hundred and seven point five. I hope thousand eight hundred and seven point five. So now you can notice that it really doesn't matter what the number of years is, whether it's three years, four years, five years, because it's a simple interest. All you have to do is calculate the interest for one year and then multiply for how many other years you want, and that's it. And you already know how to do this really, really well. So all you will do is you will calculate the interest. The interest for one year, which what is that? That will simply be equal to the rate, the rate divided by hundred, multiplied by the principal, by the principal, P R I N C I P A L, and that's it. And why does this work? The rate by hundred gives you the interest for one rupee, and multiplied by the principal gives you the interest for principal rupees, and this is done. But all of this is still for only one year. As long as you hold it for one year. So now, if you move this here, if you want it for many years, what should you do? Nothing. All you have to do is multiply with the number of years you want. In this case, if it's three, it's three. If it's four, it's four. If it's n, it's n. So the interest at the end of n years of holding something will be the rate divided by hundred multiplied by the principal multiplied by the number of years you want. And this is the uh, famous or infamous. P N R by hundred, P N R by hundred, or P R T by hundred formula for the interest for the simple interest after n years. But you now know exactly why it works.